Hello, everyone. This is Robert from Book of Mormon Editions, where we discuss printings, publications, and various editions of the Book of Mormon. This next video comes from a recommendation, and I'm honored that viewers would reach out and ask me to review this next edition of the Book of Mormon. So recently, we reviewed a few of the replica editions of the 1830 Book of Mormon. I had previously seen this copy and didn't know much about it until now. So today, I'd like to spend some time and review the Grandin Artisan's 1830 replica of the Book of Mormon. This is also called the Grandin Stratford, as its official listing is the Grandin Artisan's replica, published by Stratford Books. This is a hardcover volume that has the same dimensions as an original 1830 text. The book came in a plastic wrap and has a dust cover ribbon on the outside for the barcode and purchase details. It also comes with a bookmark giving references on where this replica was sourced from. Once the plastic cover and ribbon are removed and is taken off, this book is the equivalent of what an 1830 edition of the Book of Mormon would look like. One of the significant details of this edition is that there are no new printing text or updated ISBN numbers within the inside pages. The text, including the publication page, is just as it was in the 1830 publication, and it's relatively clean replica for a clean text for a replica. Once again, the 1830 edition was in novel form, no versing and very little chapters or line breaks. Speaking of the text, this volume is interesting, as I've mentioned before, that a replica edition reflects the characteristics of the source 1830 printing it came from. And in this case, this text is different from the other 1830 replicas in some of the typographical errors that we've seen previously, which in itself is pretty amazing. I've compared this one to the 1970 RLDS reprint, that was a benchmark printing of the time, and also to the Palmyra replica. All three of these are very interesting and actually very unique in terms of their text block. For example, this image has page 212 with a proper page number, as others have an error listing it as page 122. Also on page 144, line 36, some other replicas have the word about misspelled, and this Stratford Grandin replica has a proper spelling of it. The bookmark says that this edition was sourced from a triple E error printing found within the three witnesses page. So I had to look this one up and sure enough, on the witnesses page, line 10, there's a word seen with three letter E's. I called a publisher on this and they mentioned that the source text came from an edition at the Brigham Young University. It seems others may have come from the Wilford Wood Uncut Sheets or different 1830 printing sources. This might seem like a geek, a geek out to finding various typographical errors on various 1830 replicas, but I found it fascinating that it's true that no two copies of the 1830 Book of Mormon were alike, as the typesetter adjusted the type errors as he went along while keeping the pre-printed pages. Professor Royal Scoudson has done some significant work combing through the textual analysis of real original 1830 printings. However, I think it would be interesting to go through all of the typos found on the replica editions and having some discussion about it. I'll put that on my to-do list and keep everyone posted about it if anything comes about. In the meantime, this Grandin Artisan's replica is really well put together. The cover ribbon lists several key features of this volume and mentions that there are over 50 characteristics that compare this printing to an original 1830 Book of Mormon. The cover ribbon also has endorsements from some predominant bookmakers for its quality. Among the characteristics for this volume is that this is the one of the few replicas that has a leather cover. It even has a leather smell and makes for a tight, well-put-together copy. The cover ribbon also mentions that there have been several printing series of this, and this one here is the sixth printing in the sixth series of the printings. It also seems that the series had about 5,000 copies printed for each run. So I'm impressed with the success of this edition. I know that this will be a nice copy to include in a Book of Mormon collection or part of a bookshelf of gospel books. These can be found on church bookstore websites and other online bookstores. And a big thank you to those that recommended this volume and to the publishers who gave some background details regarding the making of this book. 
If you have a special or unique edition of the Book of Mormon that you'd like reviewed here, please contact me at bomeditions at gmail.com. Best wishes until next time.